uh, the Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured to rise tonight to speak on behalf of thousands of homeless veterans in Canada. In February, Mr. Speaker, veterans gathered in Ottawa for the left out in the cold protests to raise awareness about growing levels of homelessness among, uh, amongst Canada's veterans. Just down the street, uh, veterans Trevor Sanderson and Dick Groot, drove all the, who drove all the way from Winnipeg, uh, were protesting by sleeping outside in the cold. And in testimony at committee, the co-founder of Vets Canada said the number of homeless veterans had grown to 5,000. In fact, we just heard from Danny LaFontaine, the public relations officer of uh, Aboriginal veterans, that uh, he was in Montreal in one day in 2015, and they met with 3,200 homeless people, and 6% of them, Mr. Speaker, were veterans. We need to bring that number to zero. It's totally unacceptable for any veteran who risks their life for a country to be left to fend for themselves on the streets. Last November, 29,000 veterans were waiting for their applications for disability benefits to be processed, and nearly one-third of these applications have been waiting for a response for four months or longer. According to Scott Maxwell, the executive director of Wounded Warriors Canada, the backlog, quote, can mean the difference between being a homeless veteran and not, end quote. These wait times are unacceptable, and they only continue to grow. The government has now committed $42.8 million over two years to address the backlog in protest, uh, processing the increased number of claims, but has not told us what it would cost to get it, that number to zero. It has to get to zero. That's what veterans deserve, Mr. Speaker. The men and women who risk their lives on behalf of our country should be assured economic security and, th and their, that their needs, including the needs of their families, will be taken care of. Many veterans are falling through the cracks because they are not aware of the very services that are available. In a recent news article, the same Trevor Sanderson, who also suffers from PTSD as well as physical injuries, said that he was unaware for two decades that he qualified for a payout. Unfortunately, he's not alone. He said that many veterans are unaware of the services that they qualify for and then face long wait times. Why don't they know about their programs, Mr. Speaker? This government, who campaigned on doing more for veterans, has failed at the most basic level. Clearly, their actions are just for show and not for change, and the government must do better to inform veterans of the available services and benefits they're entitled to. Both Liberal and Conservative governments have failed to address the problem of homeless veterans. If veterans don't know about these services, it's impossible for them to take advantage of these opportunities. We must break this terrible cycle today. Just this morning, Trevor Sanderson told me that he's going to Saskatchewan on Saturday to repair a roof for a, a secluded veteran. On June 27th, he plans to go to Nova Scotia to help fix a PTSD treat, uh, retreat that was damaged by storms last year. This is the type of sacrifice our, our veterans continue to exhibit. Now it's our turn to do the same for them, Mr. Speaker. He told me that, quote, the homeless vets that are living in Canada are the forgotten brothers and sisters that need to be found, and together as a country, we should not forget the promise that we made to them for the service that they did, and only working together can we find a way to help them find a place again to call home, end quote. To show veterans the respect that they deserve, we must address the root problem. The government continues to promise that veterans will be treated better, but their promises are falling short. Prime Minister, uh, the Prime Minister said veterans are, quote, asking for more than we are able to give them right now, end quote. Veteran, veterans risked everything, Mr. Speaker, and we need to make sure that we follow the obligation, the sacred obligation that we have to them, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown, Indigenous Relations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Courtney Alberni for his question this evening. And I know he's very passionate about this issue, as I've heard him speak to it on many times in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, homelessness is unacceptable in any state or form in this country, and one veteran being homeless is one veteran too many. And I would like to reassure this House that the government is taking action against the tragedy of homelessness. At Veterans Affairs Canada, they believe that veteran homelessness should be avoided wherever possible, and that it is our responsibility to ensure that when a veteran does find themselves homeless, 
They have the supports to ensure that it is a brief and non-reoccurring situation. We have heard the Minister for Veterans Affairs express that on more than one occasion. Through our focus, increased focus on outreach, we are also identifying more homeless veterans and getting them the mental and financial supports that they need. That has been an action that has been taken seriously by this government, by the minister and by his department to ensure that wherever possible, we will be able to identify homeless veterans in this country and get them the supports that they need. Veterans Affairs Canada works alongside community organizations, local shelters, transition homes and first responders. Our partnerships with organizations like these greatly enhance our ability to provide services to homeless veterans as well as to raise the awareness about the services and the programs that are currently out there. But we also know that we need to continue to build on that community capacity at every level. We also know that we have to continue to strengthen our partnerships with all of those groups who work on the front lines and are critical in providing and addressing veteran homelessness in this country. So on June the 7th, the Department of Veterans Affairs will be hosting a roundtable on homeless with organizations from right across the country to discuss how they can continue to better help Canadian veterans. The roundtable will bring together local, regional and national organizations that work to reduce veterans' homelessness. This conversation will inform the development of a national approach to veterans' homelessness through exchanging information and coordinating outreach activities with all of those groups that are involved. We are really proud to be taking a whole-of-government approach in addressing this issue on homelessness in Canada. And Veterans Affairs Canada is working closely with CMHC and Employment and Social Development Canada, which both have the federal mandates to address homelessness to ensure that veterans remain considered as a priority within our population. As well, on April the 1st, there was a number of new initiatives that was specifically announced addressing the well-being of veterans and their families in Canada. The Veteran Emergency Fund will help them address urgent circumstances that may put veterans at risk of becoming homeless, and the fund will also support veterans and their families and survivors by providing them short-term relief while they work to identify the long-term needs and possible solutions. As well, Mr. Speaker, the education and training benefit will provide up to $40,000 for veterans with six or more years of service and up to $80,000 for those with 12 or more years of service to put towards post-secondary education and professional training. Mr. Speaker, we are taking concrete action to deal with this problem and we will continue to work with all of those who want to work with us to ensure that no veteran is left without a home. Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, and I want to thank my friend and colleague because I do know she cares. And I appreciate her rollout of programs that are going to help veterans. But if veterans can't access these services, they're no good to them, Mr. Speaker. They fall through the cracks. They get their hopes up. And when they can't access these services, they get disappointed. And then they lose hope. We can't have that happen anymore, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. It's our duty to help veterans succeed, succeed now, now that they're home. We must take action to ensure that no veterans are left homeless. At the very least, they deserve a home. The third annual Vets Canada Coast to Coast Tour of Duty Walk for Homeless Veterans is scheduled to take place in 17 cities across Canada on June 3rd. I encourage Canadians and members of Parliament to participate, to convey their gratitude to the veterans who served, support them, stand alongside with them, and bring attention to this issue. However, it's extremely important to recognize that we shouldn't have to have a walk to draw attention to this issue. Our veterans, as well as their dependents and survivors, should be treated with dignity, respect, and fairness, and there should be no homeless veterans, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to say that members on this side of the House walk with veterans every day in our ridings and in many other regions across Canada. 
We walk with them, Mr. Speaker, and we support them. And we do so because we firmly believe that no veteran should be left homeless in Canada. We also believe that the programs and the supports that we have brought forward as a government is done with the intention of helping veterans through what have been difficult times for them in this country, whether it's been through mental health issues and PTSD, whether it's been through supporting themselves and their families, both through living arrangements and financial supports. These are the programs and initiatives that we have implemented, and we have done so with their input and with their participation. And we are going to continue on that path of, of supporting those in this country that have committed themselves to Canadians, that have served in the uniform, not only in Canada, but all around the world. And we will do what we need to do to ensure that no veteran in this country is left homeless and no veteran is left alone.